Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of Debate Night. we got a great show, lots of fun topics. The DDO brought a little bit of controversy, which we've been missing for a while, so that'll be nice to dig into. Uh, we also have a great cast today. We finally have the Dustin Rich matchup that everybody has wanted for, for ages now. It's happening. It's the night. Uh, Hunter wanted to be here, but it is his birthday. Happy birthday, Hunter. Turning the big 3-0 tonight. Big 3-0. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. yeah, Hunt. Yeah. Yeah, Hunt. So make sure to uh, say happy birthday, happy 30th to Big Hunt. Uh, but let's introduce our guest tonight, uh, Brody Smith. Not really a guest. Brody has residency. He's like uh, Bruno Mars in Vegas where he has to pay off his debts to us by appearing on the show. Yeah, man of the people read the comments last week. Uh, there we go. Someone did say that Gary should take my spot as like a, the permanent spot. Oh, no, feel a little bit, feel a little bit attacked there. So I'm gonna hopefully have a good show tonight. Also, man of the people read the comments. Shocker, we had four people that didn't read word for ro- word their notes, and people liked the, sh- the show. Wild, wild concept there. Um, video <laughs> for me wasn't great. Uh, still haven't cashed yet on tour, but I did just pull a $3,000 card. So I think, well, did you pull that okay. card? Did you yeah. pull that card? Yeah. It's oh, it wasn't off. the Stroud that Kelsey pulled. Kelsey pulled the Stroud. That, oh, okay. That's a, that's like a $450 card. Okay. I pulled, I pulled the $3,000 card. Hopefully if it comes back at PSA 10, I feel like but, you're kind of on a hot streak right now. Uh, some would say that some would say that okay, okay. Uh, not in disc golf though no but the game did feel good i did have six birdies in a row so like Let's my go. ceiling my ceiling is start i'm starting to get back to my ceiling my floor is still very low all right all still right. very low slip floors all right well we're also joined by rich tonight it's been a while since rich has been here but he is back he's got another background we'll see what else he's got <laughs> oh yeah it's just this is this is uh my office view of the city of austin where i'm currently playing very mediocre disc golf Although I did crush it in our weekly fantasy game. So I'm on top of the world right now. Oh, there you go. Um, and then uh, Dustin is joining us again, back to back. It's a rarity these days, but it I is. have indeed made a, a third appearance of the season and back to back appearances and happy to be here as uh, I represent PC gaming esports versus mobile gaming esports against Rich. Know, it's the battle yeah. of the esports uh, giants. Yeah. Right. And yeah. disc golf. So let's, let's do it. It's going to be great. Everyone and has then... a phone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. You don't Our phones, phones are computers, though. Oh, also, me. I forgot to say, Rich, can you do this? Mm. Yeah, didn't think so, brother. That's tough. Didn't think so, brother. That's tough. And Get uh, wrecked, Rich. <laughs> oh. Get wrecked. Look at this. Look at um, this. Yes, he has an Apple product. Congratulations. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we're also joined today by Jake. Jake making second appearance, I believe. Second appearance. Yeah. First time around didn't go so hot. I'm out for vengeance, but I'm starting to gain a little bit of insight that this might be a competitive week so it's gonna be my a game it's gonna yeah. be competitive all right That's all you can do i see rich doing something right now he's cooking he's, he's fun he's, he's cooking, fun. He's cooking something up i I'll see you he's cooking he's, <laughs> he's always like cooking. what can i do what can i do um Man. all right we're gonna hop into our first topic here uh hmm. finally finally calvin gets his flowers so calvin heimberg finally ends his year-long uh wind drought uh in style at ddo while ricky falls short again and continues to search for his first win of the 2024 season is ricky number one on the needs a win hot seat right now if not who is brody all right well this is the reason why ricky's not on the number uh need to win hot seat if we go back all the way to 2021 i actually do have notes here uh oh, Lord. wow trevor oh, trevor oh. thinks i don't do research before the show that is false oh, i do, do research <laughs> i just don't do like a paragraph and write it i just okay. uh I, you know i got some stuff so 2021 he won four times ledstone preserve jonesboro texas state co-champ at ledstone 2022 he had five wins Four championship, limited field. Take that for what you want. GMC, Ledgestone, DDO, and Texas State. Uh, last year, two wins. This Golf Pro Tour Tour Championship, limited field, and preserve. So looking at it, like last year, he didn't really win going back to t- what he did in 2021 and 2022. He didn't really win as much. He really only won one full field event. Uh, this year so far, he got second at chess.com where AB said, here I am. Uh, he got third place at Music City Open where Simon Lazat says, I'll do anything to win a guitar. And then at <laughs> Champions Cup, he got third as well where Press said, I'm the best fairway finder in the world and that's all that matters out there. So I don't really see this narrative of like, is he the the guy? 
I think the guys are actually Ezra Aderhold and Aaron Gossage. I'm putting them on the hot seat. Goose man, mm. third at chess.com, second at MVP last year, second at Portland, third at OTB. We saw what happened at Portland. He had the win, couldn't capitalize, could have won at OTB as well. Ezra Adahol got third at Texas State, second at Jonesboro, third at European Open, and second at Las Vegas. I'm putting those two on the hot seat. Okay, interesting. Welcome to the hot seat, Ezra and Aaron. Uh, Rich, do you concur? It, you know, if you asked me this question a few days ago, I was going to say that there was no way it was Ricky, right? I was going to say that Ricky has uh, had a few wins last season, that so far this season he's been on the podium a couple of times. He hasn't fallen out of the top 20 at all. I think five or six performances are top 10 performances. And I was going to say it was Paul because Paul hasn't won a Pro Tour event on American soil since 2022. And the last Pro Tour event he won was uh, winning an axe in Europe with a, a good but jet-lagged field. But then I go back to thinking about the text I sent Sunday morning to my friend Bob, which said that Ricky looked shook. Ricky did not look like he was prepared and ready and comfortable. And I think we saw that throughout that weekend. He, from hole number one, heard footsteps. He saw Calvin with a throw and a half without a full-on forehand coming from behind him. And you saw him start to get nervous. And throughout the day, you saw his face look more and more uncomfortable. And then you talk about the back nine, where he was still in contention, and he was throwing pressure throws, and Calvin was throwing comfy throws. And that, to me, says that Ricky was feeling like he needed to win in that event rather than he could win that event. So for me right now, yeah, it has to be Ricky. He has to start getting into a situation where he doesn't just win, but he does it feeling like he's comfortable in that winning opportunity. Otherwise, it's potentially going to be a fairly long time for, oh, and look at that. Fairly long oh, time. It's so, uh, so, so oh, so sad. Oh, look at that. That was like a bottle rocket that never even left the ground. <laughs> it's, it's definitely I interesting. Fly, Brody. <laughs> I, I give you props. I give you props. Definitely says a lot that Ricky, uh, you know, had the lead, lost in the final round to a guy who hasn't been able to get it done in the final round. Not at the best look. Uh, Dustin, do you think Rick is in trouble? I don't think he's in trouble. I mean, if you're going by rankings, then sure, he is kind of next in line to win. He's currently ranked fifth, uh, I think, in the UDIS World Rankings from last year and third in the PGA current rankings. Around him, Calvin's got his win. Simon's got his win. Burr got his win. And Antela got his win. And then you got AB popping off. So everyone around him is kind of getting wins except for him. So with that being said, with him being a top five player, Yes, it feels like he should get a trophy by now, but he's playing pretty well. Let's face it. I mean, he came fifth at DDO. He was in contention, third at Champions Cup, third at MCO, second at chess.com. Like, he's putting up pretty good results. He's not necessarily struggling overall. He's been pretty consistent. Yes, people aren't going to remember consistent top 10 finishes. They want wins, and so in that respect, he's falling short. But I don't think that he is the one that is necessarily completely on the hot seat. Um, Macbeth looks kind of rough right now. I mean, he only had the second at Music City Open and the top 10 at Champions Cup. Other than that, he's been awfully quiet. You know who else has been awfully quiet? Kyle Klein, a guy who was in the top 10 a lot last year and has so far the last four or five events not really shown himself at all. But do you really know who's really on the hot seat? Trevor, I think you do. It's Isaac Robinson. This guy won two majors last year. He was a player of the year candidate. And so far this season, outside of top 10 finishes at DDO and chess.com, the guy is barely like making top 20 finishes when he used to barely place outside the top 20. This guy came 71st at Music City Open, 47th at Waco, 29th at Austin, 22nd at Texas States. And then at Champions Cup, the major he won last year, different course, he didn't show up. So I think he's more on the hot seat than Ricky is, in my opinion. I, I think I'd have to agree with you. I really like that answer. I think that Isaac put himself in an interesting spot rattling off the wins he did last year in the big spots that he did because he set the bar very high and he hasn't really been a proven consistent player uh, for stretches on the tour yet. So I, I'd have to very much agree with you, Dustin. Um, Jake, let's hear it. Who is on your hot seat? Yeah, well, first off, just talking about Ricky. I put Ricky on the hot seat, but for a major. He's, I mean, we've talked about this for years now. He, he's got to win a major. I think if he goes the rest of the season with no wins and wins a major, I'd still call that a win for him because he needs it. He needs it. His legacy is starting to fizzle out without that major. And speaking of legacies, uh, Dustin, you brought him up. I was hoping nobody else would because it sounded like no one would, but Paul McBeth is having a rough go at the season. I know he's coming back from an injury. He's got a family now. He's got a lot on his plate but he is a pro disc golfer first. And with what he's seen the past decade plus in terms of success, you would expect better than a average. I think it's somewhere around 30th is what he's averaging this year. It's been on the incline recently, but I want to talk about a guy who really the second half of the season is going to be telling, and that's Eagle McMahon as well. 
They signed Eagle McMahon to a huge contract. They brought in Simon Lazat with a huge contract. MVP spent a lot of money on those two guys with good reason. They're high performers, but you know, you think about that switch, Dismania let them walk. And so I really want to see what Eagle McMahon is going to do when he comes out here. I had Isaac Robinson, Aaron Gossage also written down. Um, so just to summarize, yeah, Ricky, he's on the hot seat, but for a major, but I put Eagle McMahon on the hot seat for a win. That's actually a sneaky good pick. I really like that because anytime, and this is kind of like how it was when Simon first uh, came back, but anytime you have a player, you know, coming, going to a new manufacturer that was with one for a very long time and you have the injury uncertainty, I do think Eagle will feel pressure to like make that statement because Simon did not take super long to make that statement. There's always going to be the comparisons because of the similarity of their moves. So I actually really like those picks. Good picks. Rebuttal. Good picks from the boys. Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, this could be a shocker for some. I'm actually going to defend Paul Macbeth. Actually, I don't <laughs> think um, I don't think he's actually having a bad season. Uh, I yeah, think I he's actually I think he's actually in. I, I think you guys have forgotten how much he fell off the face of the map to where we weren't even talking about him ever. Mm -hmm. He's now put himself multiple times in the conversation, at least of where yeah. he's snuck into the top five at a major. He's had a good round here and there to where you are talking about him. Yeah. There was months where no one even brought him up and it got to the point of where it's like, let's not, you know, let's not even bring it up anymore. Yeah. You know, like it's, yeah. it's sad. You are know, you really going to tell me Paul, that's not having a bad season when he placed outside the top 50 compared times? to what he used to do. I, I think yes, that he's yeah. having, he's having, he's playing way better than I what think he when used you consider to see. The he played last way few better weeks. last season than what he's playing right now. I no. think he struggled last season. He definitely had better results no. last season. He was oh. never in the conversation. Are you serious? The dude had way better finishes early part of last year compared to early part of this year. Go look when at the When was number. he ever in the conversation of winning a tournament? Last year? Las I Vegas Challenge I, was one of them. Waco I could was got wrong. injured in July. I could be wrong. I don't remember people being like, oh, watch out. Like, Paul, I don't remember seeing him. Oh, here, here's the, a McBeast the beginning tweet of the from year, the Discord Pro Tour. The beginning of the year was one thing, but at post-injury in July... Yeah, he he fizzled out completely to where sure. in the beginning of this, you know, the first few events in this year, we were done talking about it. Uh, I think just the last few events, yeah. um, namely, the, where did he, where was he, the Champions Cup, he was in the conversation, it was the, and MCO, was, he came second. So, yeah, was, I mean, I guess it was MCO, but yeah. his last few events, he's shown enough to where he will be back in the conversation. You know, yes. if he can continue the, this little yeah. streak he's on, by the time we get to European Open, by the time we get to Worlds at his home course, practically, you sure. know, there's gonna be, he'll be back in the conversation, and that I think that is a success for him. Obviously, when you look at his body of work, it's one thing, but I think he's on but a good also, trajectory right now. You also can't do that. You can't be like Paul's having a bad season unless he. No, wins I would agree. I, like, I think for what times he, have changed. Yeah, for it's what he has, core. what it, what things have been looking like for him lately. I think right now, it snapshot. He's in a good place and yes. headed in a good direction. I, I would he's agree not with a that. Bad season at all. He doesn't need to win. He's he might drop out of right. the top ten for the first time in like over a decade. Statmando has him out of the top ten. Right yeah. Now, right. So he does need to get a couple of good. I mean, wins. I saw a positive yeah. upswing at MCO and PDGA Champions Cup, but he didn't look that good at DDO either. So it's just like I don't really know where he is. I guess is. But the he had, he still he, had he, moments at yeah, DDO I mean, where he, he came out DDO that one round and and yeah, and yeah it's it's, it's flashes, flashes right now though. There. There it's go. flashes. That's, but there was no, that. that's that's the whole thing. There wasn't any flashes yeah. last year. Like no, there wasn't any. Yeah. I, well, I don't know what we're talking about here, Dustin. We're just that, talking. We're not talking about him getting back to where he was before. We're just saying he needs a win to really boost himself. When back I think up. about He's last year, I think like post injury last year. I'm not okay. thinking about yes. the beginning yes. of the year. You're not. No one's. Yeah, because no like before then, it wasn't really, month. wasn't really a serious. What, what, what are we talking about, Dustin? If someone, if someone balls out of control the first two games of a season, and then the last 14, 15 games, they're absolute dog trash. <laughs> No one is thinking that person is going to be good going I, into the next season. I don't really know what Macbeth's finishes were uh, at the beginning of last year. We weren't talking about him. We were at least actually it's, talking uh, about him. He was consistent. He was he, he had a few top tens at the beginning of the season, and then Champions Cup, he struggled. Then the injury thing happened, and then he came back for the European Tour, won a bunch of European Tour events. No one cares about those. Then the PCS Open, and then uh, he came back. It was a weird year. Worlds. Cause like the PCS was the win and you were kind of like, Oh, like, yeah, okay. He's still around. And, and then, and, you know, that was leading into, um, that was leading into European open. Wasn't it to where it was like, Oh, yeah. this is, this is setting up perfect for him. I think and it was then, the week before. Yeah. And then it just didn't happen. And it was a, yeah, it was a weird one. Um, yeah. but 
anyways, yeah, we'll have to see. He's definitely going to be interesting to watch going forward. All right, next topic. This one's kind of a fun one. This is a fan submitted topic. I wasn't even going to write this in after I saw it, but then people wanted to, like, multiple people submitted this as a topic. I'm like, all right, we're going we're gonna to get into it. So uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, the line between professional professionalism and creativity here. So... This was fan submitted. Where is the line between professional and unique creativity? Do we like that disc golf's unique atmosphere can incorporate a Star Wars themed spotter on hole 16? If you didn't see it, uh, it was May the 4th, Star Wars Day, and there was a spotter holding two different colored lightsabers, uh, lightsabers, I should say, uh, to, to indicate inbounds or out of bounds. So do we like that they can incorporate that on hole 16, or do we want to maintain a full professional look? Where is the line? Uh, we talk about this all the time, but the, the lightsaber thing, it was out there. Rich, what do you think? Well, let me let me start with uh, a question here. Everybody here in this group married. Most of us, are, or at least half of us, are married here, right? There's there's a question at a certain point where you know you used to get dressed up, you used to look really nice, you put on your best stuff, and now it's kind of like, hey, you're putting on a lot of nice stuff. Who are you trying to impress tonight, <laughs> right? Because you're not going out trying to get any. You're trying. You're st- you're coming back home in the evening, and with the pro tour, right? Like you're looking at this and you go. Who are you trying to impress when you professionalize every moment of every shot of every single hole? This needs to be a professional tour. We need to have the clips for ESPN. We need to have the ability to show and get out on social media and attract new eyes with that <laughs> stuffed shirt. Hey, we used to wear our, our collars, but now we got rid of them type of environment. But we don't need that most of the time. Let a guy have some lightsabers on hole 16. It's not hurting anybody because no one's looking. And we don't have to show it to anybody because we're behind a paywall. It's not like it's somehow uh, undoing the prestige of DDO, the glass blown open, where maybe the trophy is a glass ball and maybe it used to be a glass something else years ago. What are we talking about here? Have some fun and then make everyone else look at the nice stuff so that we look cool to the people at ESPN when they pick top tens. All right, Rich is pro lightsaber. Um, yes. Dustin, are you also on team lightsaber? I am on team lightsaber. Because look, I mean, <laughs> there there is obviously a desire for disc golf to be taken more seriously by a lot of people. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Like you want, you know, the sport to not be a laughing stock on ESPN top 10 when the outsiders just don't even know what the heck is going on and kind of making fun of the sport. Like that obviously kind of feels bad. And so in some regards, yeah, you want the sport to be taken seriously. Uh, obviously just to make the whole pursuit of being a disc golfer a more legitimate thing on the youth and college side, as well as the pro side, not just as a competitor, but also just all the jobs that go along with it in the media front the sales front, marketing front. Yeah, you want disc golf to obviously grow. You want to bring in more viewership, more sponsor dollars, and so on and so forth. And so there are indeed incentives to want to make the sport look a little bit more professional. With that said, it's okay to have some quirkiness, right? We see this all the time in other sports. It's not just disc golf. And so, yeah, I think the Star Wars spotter was totally fine. But if you go to a baseball game, you're going to see the mascot doing some weird crap in between innings. You're going to see NBA mascots doing weird crap in between quarters. And yes, it's for more for the live audience, actually at the field and at the court, as opposed to like on the live broadcast. So it's a little bit different. But I don't mind there being some type of combination of professionalism and quirkiness as long as, you know, we're still kind of maintaining competitive integrity and still doing all the things we need to be doing correctly. And, yeah, if you throw in a little bit of fun, it's May the 4th. I mean, come on, it was a theme thing. It's not that big of a deal. I don't really see why there should really be any complaints. Uh, and uh, I'm, all, I'm all for it. All right. Dustin, not a big deal to Dustin. Jake, do we have a third member of Team Lightsaber? Yes, we do. Uh, I think... <laughs> There is, I I wanted to find a case against it. I really did uh, because I felt like everyone was going to be in support of it. But the thing is, disc golf is already something where we're really trying to nail down the seriousness of the actual parts that we're playing that are televised as, you know, I think everyone has said so far. Um, You know, the players are coming out, they're representing their manufacturers, they're playing, everyone is quiet when they're throwing. You know, we're keeping it respectful. The only case I can think of where maybe someone pushes that line in previous times is the eight holes at maple hill right they are loud they are rambunctious but some players love it some players hate it that's the only time where i see it becoming you know is this an issue or is this just part of the game we love and it's you know as famous as you know a section of fans at a college football game is that all this is with the lightsabers, it's not a big deal. It's a theme. It's one guy having some fun. I don't think anyone outside of disc golf and even some people in disc golf are going to see it. So let people have some fun. That's all it is. Disc golf for a lot of people is fun. 
Okay. Another <laughs> member of Team Lights. Or Brody, you look absolutely dismayed right now. I feel like. so. got, here's the thing. I'm not on one side or the other, but your okay. guys' our arguments are absolute trash. Each one of you had terrible arguments. I'll, I'll, go let's, 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 let's go Please. down the list. Let's, probably, let's, hear. Let's, let's go down the list here. All right. We'll start with... Um, I can't even... Is that... I can't even see... Styles, can you make all the names big? Was it Jake, Rich, or Dustin? I can't Pretty even easy. see any of the names. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll start with Rich first. Rich, and, and uh, I will like to uh, extend my time here, Trevor. You can take some points off for me to extend my time because okay. um, wow. I, I want to, I'm going to rebuttal every single one. I mean, of you've already wasted 40 seconds just getting That's started. That's fine, so. Dustin. Let me talk. <laughs> Okay, um, boss. All right, Rich, make it look good when there is top tens, I think is what you said, right? You're like, let's just make it look good when ESPN is going to show it on Sports Air top 10. It's, it was a part of it, sure. So what happens when Calvin or Ricky aces that hole and the lightsaber guy pulls it out and starts freaking out? <laughs> no, That's going to be on ESPN. No, no. That's even better. That's now memeable. You know what? We just went double viral for that. So I'll even go further. Here's Put the that thing. in the top 10, darn it. Okay, that's fine. Because my count, if you were going to say, well, we don't want that, my counter argument is our most popular shot actually is a shirtless man running around in American uh, shorts, right? The most popular shot in disc golf has that. And uh, take that as you will. Okay, rebuttal to, uh, is it Jason? Is, I can't even Jake. see the names. Jake. Jake. Sorry, Jake. Apologies. Uh, you said, um, you know, there's uh, mascots out there, you know, having fun, doing that stuff. Was me. That, that was me. Dustin. Dustin? Okay, yeah. Dustin, you said mascots out there doing fun, all that. Yeah, do, yeah. We, do we know the difference between a mascot that's there for entertainment and an official spotter? Do we see a difference there? That dude's a volunteer. Are we okay? That's not he's an official literally marshal. there on. He's <laughs> Dustin. He's on the green, telling Correct. you whether it's inbounds or out of bounds. Tell me when the mascot is actually on the field of play, telling you when when something is happening and people are watching that person. Are people looking at the mascot to see if the field goal went through, Dustin? <laughs> are people watching the mascot no. to see if the field goal went but through? But if you can't tell that that just didn't on make that arm, then you got your own on, problems, bro. To my, well, the, the 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 guy didn't even know if it made it with uh, Missy Gannon at the end. He gave him like the weird thing when it was clearly on. Uh, next one. Okay. Jake, thank you, Silas, for making this too. I can actually read it. Jake, you said <laughs> uh, you compared it to sections of fans of college football game. Do we know the difference between a fan and official spotter that's on the field of play? Are that, those was the, that, was the, different? that was the eight holes. Are those different though? The fans are the fans going nuts. The fans dressing up. The fans doing like a little Darth March with Darth Maul with lightsabers and players <laughs> walking Darth underneath March. it. Do we see that being different than a spec than a than a spot official spotter telling you whether it's in or out? Well, I was comparing those to the eight holes. I absolutely see the comparison with okay. the eight holes. Also, I was that at. also nobody outside disc golf is going to see it. They will if a big thing happens. And I agree. That's great. Let's make okay. us look quirky. Let's like. I, but but I'm saying your argument, your argument, saying it doesn't matter because no one outside <laughs> disc golf. To me, that okay. sounds like you don't care about it because no one's going to see it. So who cares? But if but if it's a good thing, then then it wouldn't matter if people are going to see it or not. That's what I'm saying. These arguments, I, I don't understand these arguments at all. At all, I, I was listening to them. None of them really sold me on it's a good thing or not. I think they all had holes. Each one of you had holes in your argument. Um, okay. so that's, nice. that's all I'll say to that. Appreciate listen, it. I, if anyone want to rebuttal me too, listen, I will hear there's, there's, no, there's no harm in showing it. Right? I will say, so I, I yes. Mean. When I see the lightsaber thing, I kind of think like, Oh brother, like, okay. I don't know how I feel about that. However, I can't really disagree with the fact that should a, something happen that got us on any like other media platforms and you saw the lightsaber, it might help our exposure, but maybe not for the right reasons. Correct. Yeah. And it's going gonna, gonna to be like, look at these guys in the Frisbee sport with the lightsaber in, instead of that's yeah. a serious. It's you're, it's you're, very you're, tough battle we're fighting you're, already. You're definitely going to be getting all the athletes being like, oh, that's the sport I want to go into and play. It's an, it's like, an uphill battle sometimes. Uh, because yeah, go it's ahead, like, Jake. I want I'll someone to rebuttal my points that I gave. Does anyone have a rebuttal to what I said? The, the guy points, you brought up at Worlds. Yeah, the guy that you brought up at Worlds, he was not staff. He was just running around trying Correct. to get. And that's why I think that's fine. We I have streakers that profession. That's what that's. That's fine. That's I ruining the moment. Lightsabers are not ruining the moment by staff. That's just something fun. That guy was just trying to get attention from James Conrad, who deserved the attention. 
I don't know that what your point, I don't know what your point is, Jake. When when spectators are doing stuff, fans are doing stuff. That's fine. When it's an official person doing stuff, that's where the line needs to be drawn. But you were talking about I mean, what if someone sees that guy in the American shorts on ESPN on correct. another show? Everyone, every, everyone, uh, no one knows that's, what that guy's doing because right. everyone's going nuts. Spotters are at least wearing, for the most part, staff shirts. Uh, he was wearing a death. Jedi cloak, Jake. <laughs> yeah, but Again, for the most part, terrible months, point. Uh, the all three of you made terrible points. This I don't even care if I go to the finals. Those were all terrible points. All right, all right. Okay. We'll have to see what people say. You know, I know you'll know. I know you'll know. And the um, fact that we're talking about it clearly means right. that some people don't like it. Well, I mean, well, I'm, I'm the one that writes questions. I'm over, over it then. Things. I, what? Uh, what? They're, they're, you, some people don't like everything, right? Some people think sure. the boom boxes on the course are awesome. Some people think they're the devil, right? Sure. So it's, it's, there's a whole crowd of people on Twitter who will hate you no matter what you say. <laughs> no, I no, I um, know. The, que- the question is, what uh, at this point, like, do we want to have that to be the idea of what disc golf is? Forky, yeah, weird, Star Wars. Some some would say yes. Yeah. Some would say no. And the question is, is that the right path? That's that's yes. where people have to make their decision. Um, the Savannah Bananas. That's the future yes. of disc golf. Yes. Uh, so oh, we're gonna no. our last imagine? couple topics here. We're gonna talk Ricky FPO just drama. Playing in his Raptor outfit. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we're gonna talk luxury. FPO drama. We got two FPO drama topics here. Um, so if anybody ever says we don't talk FPO on this podcast, well, you're wrong. They're bringing the drama, and we're gonna talk about it. Uh, first off. Haley King made a rather interesting foot fault call on 18 during the playoff. What was your perception of the call? And do you think that the self-officiating system always paints players as the villain, regardless of the call? Dustin. So generally speaking, I do think that people kind of need to make up their mind on what they want. So fans have repeatedly griped over the years about people not calling people for foot faults or not calling people for time violations or not calling currency violations and so on. And so now you getting upset when someone finally does call something that they feel it might be inaccurate. I just feel like you can't really have it both ways. Now you can take the specific thing and say, was that a good call? Or was that a bad call? Again, we can't know what Haley saw maybe from her perspective, it looked like she did touch the disc or whatever the case may be, you know, it's within her right then to, to call it. And then at that point it's down to, you know, the regulations on whether or not it goes through or not. Now, I will say it wasn't a good look because it seemed like it came late, I think was like the biggest thing about it. It seemed like, because it, 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 it didn't even show on post-produced coverage, by the way. So like, you can only go see this if you go watch the live odd. So it's kind of a tricky situation. But as far as bringing up the whole idea about self-officiating, it definitely gets tricky whenever it gets down to the wire like this and that you got a potential win on the line. At a certain point, I do think that March need to be more involved on cards. Whenever you're getting into the top three cars on final day of competition, you're playing for the win or playing for like big prize money. I do think marshals need to be a little bit more in, in, in the moment. Obviously, similar situation happened with Weatherman, which I'm not going to talk about because that's a whole separate topic for later. But at the end of the day, as a fan, you have to choose whether or not you want players making calls or not. And then you can judge their calls after the fact. But personally speaking, I just think that we're going to need to see more marshals, more officiating, because I do think that the self-officiating, whenever you have potential bias, when you have potential, you know, making a call that could be in your favor to help you win, like those sorts of situations shouldn't be happening where it's in the player's hands to determine a result like that. It's certainly, you know, with self-officiating, it was one thing when there was $2,000 on the line, but when there's $10,000 plus on the line, it starts to get a little bit hairy. Uh, Jake, what are your thoughts on the call? Yeah, that was a great point you just brought up because... I really liked that Haley did it. I thought that there really isn't enough uh, officiating on the cards. I think people let a lot of things slide. And Brody, maybe you can correct me if I'm right or wrong here, but it does feel like everybody on the tour from the stops that I've been at, from the players I've interacted with, they're pretty buddy-buddy and and are friends and travel with each other, go out to eat with each other, go to each other's weddings. So it can be difficult on the course to be like, yeah, you know what, that should have been a stroke from you, but I don't know if I want to say anything and and ruffle feathers right now. But if we have a self-officiating system, the culture has to shift to people calling each other. And the good thing is it's a card decision, right? So the rest of the card needs to step up to and be able to say, hey, look, I watched it. I saw it. It was a footfall. And if the card comes to a consensus, it shouldn't be painting anyone as the villain. It just so happens someone pointed it out first. Now, I know we talked about this before on this show, but my suggestion has always been there's a scorekeeper on every card. The PDGA should release some sort of certification program. I know they're volunteers to be that tie-breaking vote in case no one saw it or to be able to back up a player, some sort of system like that. Uh, Because until we can get marshals or TDs out on every card, and I think they should follow lead card towards the end, there's just no better way to do it. 
So I think the culture needs to shift to people, players beginning to say, hey, you know, I have to call you on that. It's just the way the game goes. All right. All right. Brody, do you want to see more calls? Well, I, what I want to see, Jake, is I want to see my volunteer uh, scorekeeper with a Roman candle. And every single time I make a putt, I want them to sh- fire off a Roman candle. Brody, and, have me caddy uh, for you. That, at the next. That's what I want. I want to see. They're just a volunteer. They're just a volunteer. Um, <laughs> uh, Trevor, you now, my friend, have also made a terrible point. So all four of you, back to back to back. Look at that. Uh, you talked about the money situation and saying okay. it didn't really matter. The PJ Tour as far as I'm concerned, still has self-officiating. You still see players talk about, I touched my ball. They still talk about getting um, uh, spots. Now, obviously, they have a lot more cameras, and they can use cameras sometimes to kind of help them where the ball cross, all that stuff. But there still is. If if I'm in the rough and I touch my ball, my ball moves, I it's my job to actually stroke myself. It's my job to actually say this is what happened. Um, And they're playing for millions of dollars. So... Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I don't think you actually can fix it. And to go to Dustin's point of saying, like, we need more marshals, all this stuff. Uh, Christine Jennings was right there. This is a really weird situation because she just kind of, it looked like she almost kind of inserted herself or it almost looked like Haley King was talking to her. And like Christine Jennings is like, shut it down. The other two players on the card were like, it, from this live during a playoff, so there wasn't other players yeah, on the about? card in that situation. Oh, it's just those two. You're right. You're it right. Was Sorry. Just those two. So that, I, yeah, that's what makes fault. it trickier because it is only those two. And so, yeah, and so I I guess Christine Jennings did what she was supposed to do in that situation, but it leads to a point of where should we have marshals literally locked in on just the top cards or should they be flying around the course? So if someone else has an issue, do they just not get a marshal because they're only on the top cards? That doesn't seem that doesn't seem it's right. It's tough to because uh, this the kind of the, the kind of that like I, I do think in certain situations having marshals going around makes sense because on certain things like a, a call for a lie, for example, like that's not a live action. So someone can just show up and come look at a lie as long as no one touched it and be like, yeah, that's OB or no, that's not OB. So yeah, floating marshal situations like that do make sense. But in a situation like this where it's a head to head playoff and it's a live action like a footfall that you can't just like take a snapshot of and oh, review. For sure. it's, 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 it's a trickier situation. No, for football. sure. I, I, there are a lot of times though where players will have two to three minutes of trying to discuss what a rule is and what the ruling is. And that's where I think a marshal coming in sure. and saying, this is what the ruling is. Pace of play, move us forward. Right. I think arguably the playoff should have been easier to call. Everyone should have been watching TD officials. They should have been there. I just think it should be more simple. No, you're, you're right. I, I, I completely forgot it was in the playoff was when it happened. So you're right there. All right, Rich. Anything additional to add to all this nonsense? I mean, look, anytime you can go on Reddit for disc golf any other day and find someone complaining about the vibes problem of a call, right? Like, I didn't make a call because I didn't want to ruin the vibes. Or some guy did make a call and they ruined the vibes. And now everything is totally off. And that's the problem is that when you make a call, it implies that you were, it implies pettiness because you were focusing on what they were doing and not on your own shot. Whether it's right or wrong, that's the implication that comes across. And we see that over and over again. The problem is, as we've said already here, doing that in a situation where there's money on the line, we're playing professional. Look, I I played another disc sport in college. I played Ultimate Frisbee. And in that, we had self-officiating. And self-officiating led to most of the bad, half the bad blood was over some sort of call. I played for a team that probably made too many nasty calls. Santa Barbara Black Tide, Brody, if you remember how bad (laughs) they were. Yeah, you already know what I'm talking about. Um, So this year, though, I joined the commentary team for the Austin Soul, for the UFA. It's professional ultimate Frisbee. You know what they don't have in professional ultimate Frisbee? Self-officiating. They have refs now. Of course, we have a different situation with a big course here, but even the refs in the UFA, if they make a call in your favor that you know was wrong, you can invoke the integrity rule. And even at professional level, you can say, hey, no, that call in my favor was wrong. And they have returned, happened in my game this last weekend. We have spotters out there who could, after they spot a disc, make calls on foot faults and things like that. And then the card could still overturn them and go, hey, you know what? No, that wasn't a foot fault. Let that one go. That could be at least until we have the money for refs on every single hole, a stopgap measure that gets a better result than what we have right now. Integrity rule. Ultimate has just the craziest names. The thing um, is, though, r- sorry, real quick. The, the thing is, is like, you can't, the sport of disc golf can't actually have officials. You can't have people think about how slow place of play is. Sometimes I get Jomez and disc golf pro tour have gotten a lot better, but again, those cards play so much slower because they have to get the cameras in place. 
Now imagine a, there's a referee on the course and now they're running and you can't throw until the referee's in position to make a call of what is a, yeah. that sounds like an absolute nightmare. There is no win-win and here it is. Just don't cheat. Don't cheat. And if you do something against the rules, people on the card, call it and move on. There, that's, a, that's all we can do. It's always, yeah, it, it's an, it's an unsolvable problem when it comes to the, you know, the sport of golf and like how it needs to be officiated. Cause like, yeah, like I mentioned the money thing earlier and I, I know that there's not a better solution. I'm just saying it gets worse. Like this, this, having this, to deal with self-officiating when there's more money on the line, it's going to invoke people to do thing. worse I, things. The solution, I, the solution is cameras, right? Because name the person right now in FPO that has a little tarnish with one of their wins. Do, do we all think of the same person? Holland. Right, we're all thinking of Holland. That's something that she has to live with, right? It's true. Players now, when they have cameras on them, they are going to know if I cheat, if I do something sketchy, whatever. Do I really want to have that against me for the rest of my career? Certainly, yeah. And if there's no cameras, then that's where I think a lot of weird stuff can happen. Oh but yeah. If Missy would have stepped on her disc, and and Haley said, "I think you're foot faulted," and Missy was like, "I don't know. I didn't really feel anything." We're all now going to be like Missy's a cheater, yeah. And that, I, that's what we have to hold these play, the the fans have to hold these players accountable. I think I think the compromise here probably is is when you have a full card. Yes, it has to be on the players, but when it's a head to head like that, I do think a marshal has to be. Yeah, I don't mind that. Then, I don't mind you that. Can't, you can't have a proper call at that. Yeah, point. I was just, talking I about that. The idea, I like that because the idea is when it's just two people on a card. You can either self second to call. Who the yeah. heck is doing that? That's just a. That's a. Yeah. You shouldn't even ask somebody to have to do that. Or you, the marshal can second a call. But if a marshal seconding a call, they should be the one making the call, exactly. and that should be the call. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's very it's very weird. Like yeah, in a playoff head to head, it should be. I like that. A marshal yeah. follows. They make the call. It's that simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's difficult. Uh, well, one thing marshals can could help with. Because the foot faulting is one thing. It happens live. It happens on the spot. It's bang, bang, play. Well, one thing they could help with are OB calls, such as one that we saw that was quite interesting um, to Emily Weatherman. So let's talk about that. Uh, so I want to know, was she robbed of a spot in the playoff due to a ruling that didn't give benefit to the player when she was called OB on hole 18? What do we think? A lot of controversy surrounding this. Jake, what do you think? I mean, I don't think she was robbed. No, I think... Everybody played things by the book. They took a look at the lie, and it was ruled OB. I mean, I took a look at some pictures after the fact, and the angles were a little bit off, but you could see painted grass on the inside of the disc uh, in between the disc and the inbound, I guess, rough at that point. So the disc was OB. So I guess the controversy kind of fails to hit with me. If the card is going to sit there and say, this is OB, it's OB, and that's just the way that's going to go. That's the way this is all decided. And again, it... The self-officiating in this case is a lot It's a lot more fruitful than the foot fault calls because players do move fast when they throw, and, and the foot faults are hard to catch even if you're staring at the player, um, if they're running in high grass, et cetera. But this was a call that I think everybody got right. Emily Weatherman played exceptionally well, and it just so happened that she lost a spot in the playoff by a centimeter, maybe a couple centimeters. Um, I wish I had more to add on that. But truth be told, I took a look at it. It looks OB. They followed the rules. All right. That's where I land. That's fair. So you, so you, you saw enough of it to call it OB. I, it I, looked, I couldn't make a decision from the angles I had. I can't say I did, but from the angles I saw, I saw painted grass on the okay. inside of the disc. That tells me that there is OB line between her and the fairway. Okay. Brody, what do you think about all that? Well, I'm, bl I'm, I'm, I'm misremembering. I thought she had a birdie that hold again to the playoff. I don't think they knew the ramifications just yet. Of yeah, the, at the happen. moment in time, no, 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 she but didn't. I'm saying like in hindsight, didn't she? Have, wouldn't she have so. birdie that hole? I think she finished what, at yes. five, and she would have finished at six. Isn't that right? Correct. She Correct. finished at five. I think she finished. Because she wound up bogeying the hole because she laid up after the OB. Right. So she wound yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That well, that's what I, was, what I was saying is she wasn't going to be able to go for it probably. From no, that I, th position. I think that just parring that hole would have would have. That would have made playoff. her put her in the playoff. That would have put her in the playoff. Yeah, she okay. finished at four, and I think I think Parr would have kept her at five. Would have kept her in the playoff. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Correct, because Haley ended up bogeying that hole to drop the yes. five. Okay. Right. All right. So yeah. So okay. Um, yeah, because I I thought she maybe had a birdie that hole, which at no. that point it's like it doesn't really matter because she wasn't going to win. Um. 
So one main issue here, guys, is the, the, the grass length, right? When you're painting the grass, if the grass length is short, they're really, if we're on a golf course and they let you actually paint the grass, there really is no discussion. Uh, but here we're playing in tall grass and sometimes the disc will scoosh the grass. And so now you have, you look at it and you're like thick line, thick line, line kind of disappears, thick line, thick line. And you're wondering what's going on there. Uh, I had a situation too, where this happened, um, uh, where we kind of called it in because it looked that way. Also on another hole, I was out by an inch or two because I guess whoever was painting the line kind of like fell asleep real quick. And so they kind of went like this and did like mm. a little, did like one of these little curves. So like my disc, if you look at it between these two lines would have been in bounds, but it was this at the end of the day, do we need lines? Do we need string? Do we need posts? I don't know what the answer is, uh, but I think they actually came up with the right one here. I would have called that out OB as well. Okay. So another I, two definitive answers so far. I, I did sure you, didn't did you see enough. the Domez one yet? Uh, maybe There's, not. I, I can, I'll, t I'll text you okay. the, th the thumbnail that I'd we're going to see that. Yeah. I'd that love we're going to have that. on tour life. That's it's pretty. Okay. Obvious okay. Um, all right, Rich, what did you think about the whole situation? Well, let's first start with this benefit to the player question, because benefit of the player does not mean what I think this question here means. I'm going to read Brody. So give me a second here from yes. the rule book. Benefit of the doubt only comes into play as a tiebreaker when the group cannot make a decision. Yes. For example, if two players see the disc is safe and two see an OB, the majority says it's an OB, then it's confirmed OB. So benefit of the player, which was mentioned on, I believe, the Joe Mez prog um, broadcast. Two not a keys, shout out. Has nothing to do with this, right? Secondly, Terry said it was OB, and later on Reddit, Ian even confirmed that he asked Terry, and Terry said it was definitely OB. So let's put that OB bucket over here. Now let's talk about who's really responsible for this, and for that, let's take a trip back to Champions Landing. Oh, yeah. Go take a look at our hole number 18. Uh, OB, where it says that, that's the out-of-bounds, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Let's get a little, let's get very, very close. All right, now we're nice and close. Oh, my gosh, Let's take yes. a look at the actual throw that was made here by Emily Weatherman. This throw went up, <laughs> oh and then my over, God. it was over there, right? It hooked. This went 125 feet. It was a bad throw to begin with. Oh, come on. Why did it, why did a little it more than that. Maybe 135. It did not go. Look at look at the markers. It did not go far at all. <laughs> and now, why did it go there? Well, let's look at the. Let's go take a look at the actual line here for a second. Oh now, my that's god! But let's flip it upside down. What disc is that? That is a Firebird. She threw the most overstable disc in her bag on wet grass when there was OB on the left hand side. <laughs> It's supposed to go left at the end. It did what it's supposed to do. Why would you throw that? Let's look at uh, Haley King, who instead threw another end of a disc that's almost the same, but it goes straighter, and that would be the T-Bird 3, the Haley, the one that she sponsored for. Look where that went. Oh, that went where you're supposed to go so that you win things. God, Nobody this is robbed Emily. shaming. Trevor, Emily, this is distance so shaming. Might be. That was a bad throw. Emily <laughs> robbed Emily. She should look in her backpack to the flux capacitor to see if for some sort of like weird back to the future <laughs> she's <laughs> herself kind of situation because that's the only one who took anything from Emily on this one. <laughs> Holy cow. And every, every week I'm like, this can't get any crazier and it does. Man, that's just, that's just tough to compete with, unfortunately. Um, Dustin. Batter up. Follow that. What, what the batter heck up, Dustin. Batter up. <laughs> this is a tough one. All right. So first things first, this should have never been a possibility. Why in the world are we using fat painted lines for out of bounds? They literally did use twine on the 16 island to have a more twine. finite OB line, like twine, like little rope or whatever you want yeah, to call yeah, it. Yeah. They, they, yeah, so, no, it's so why are we not using that so we can have more definitive OB lines rather than having to have these obscure fat painted lines? So that's first things first. That's the biggest problem. Uh, you're creating a situation as a TDR core staff when you decide to do something like that. That's a problem. Have smaller margins for error. Obviously, Rich already brought up the whole benefit of the player rule. I think people indeed do misinterpret how that works. The players made a call. Because here's the thing. I can't say that she got robbed because I can't see what they saw. They were literally right on top of the disc. So they could get the most accurate view possible what it looked like. And three of the players said, yeah, I believe that's OB. And so everything at that point is kind of white clean. Everybody did their job. The self officiating worked the way that it was supposed to. And, and that's what it is. Now... Could she have decided to call over a marshal to have them look at it? Maybe that is something we can explore. But when the majority of her card is ruling her out and they have the best view of anyone, 
then I think it's really hard to kind of say that she got around the situation. She did throw a bad shot. She had the option to really go for the island if she wanted to after that bad shot. Probably wasn't going to work out for him. I'm just saying she still had the option. So, yeah, it's one of those things where I can't say that she got robbed based on just like all the facts we look at them all laid out in the open. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay. Rebuttal. Can anybody else do a rebuttal? Do it. Yeah, rebuttal. Yeah, everyone's rebuttal. I'm rebuttaling that too. String string is a terrible option for oh. your boundaries because string moves. When the disc hits it or a foot hits it or the wind hits it or a spectator hits it, that OB line is not consistent. It can be manipulated. It is actually a terrible solution. Now, should there be, can you make nicer lines? Sure. Should we mow better? Maybe. But string absolutely is one of those ones that sounds great until you see it in practice. Rebuttal! As That's long as you good. have stakes or proper ways to hold the line down, you still should be able to draw a straight line from stake to stake and have an accurate line. But anyway. Couple things. First, mm. I'll leave you guys with a thought. If that was someone other than Emily Weatherman, do you think she gets the same call? Newbie on tour, doesn't really I have think the ins this, and That's outs. the most interesting part of this is she that's tried to make like a case, and then the, the other three very quickly were like, no, and like I I can't really let say. Us, let us know in the comments down below if that was someone else. It's interesting. Name names. Does does that do they those people call it in? Other thing, best way to do it, right? We're having to show up five minutes. They're telling us about the block party. They're telling us about this comedy special that's going on. They're telling us about KG, KJ's uh, uh, disco tech party. They're okay. making us do all this stuff. We have to do all of our scores on our, on our phones. It is now required for each player to carry a 10-foot piece of twine. And there will be posts, OB posts, in the ground. And when a disc comes in between and you can't make the call, we take out our 10 feet of twine. We set them in between the two posts. And there is the solution. Perfect. If it weren't for time, it would be perfect. Oh, it's you twine. don't know how fast I can undo twine. This yeah. episode now. You like that twine, You just huh? learned what twine was. No, I didn't. I you said know, that was a great word. In hockey, uh, oh, in hockey the nets are made out of twine, <laughs> got, or they I were. I got 26 on my English a ACT. How dare you? In hockey, when they a lot of times when somebody scores, they'll say that they tickled the twine. It's a great What'd one. What would you say? They'll say In hockey, they'll say if you twi you tickled the twine if you score a goal because the nets are made out of twine. I don't like that. I don't you don't like tickles of twine? I don't like that. Like, I don't think they're pretty thick. I don't know. They'll say ripping rope as well sometimes. I like that. I like ripping rope. Okay, we'll go with that one. I really brought up this topic because there was this user on on X that said Emily Weatherman should be in this playoff. I don't know who it was. Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> yeah, it was. to be clear. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody said, line is out of bounds. Wasn't even close to touching inbounds. Good call. And he said, I'm aware of the rule. Wasn't cl even close. It's just a wrong statement. He that is down. true. It was close. It definitely was close. He, he, he was like, I think he was pretty, pretty team. She got bullied. At least at first. At least had, at first. If Terry hadn't wait, like double weighted on it, both on broadcast and later when confirmed, I would be more like, oh, I don't know. Because I couldn't tell. The, but Terry, I, like... Got a good look and said it was OB. Is that picture you threw would... in? Was that the Joe Mess picture? Uh, I have a different one, but I don't think I don't think she. she I don't think she got bullied. If anything, it would be someone else that was trying to make the call got bullied or peer pressured, right? Because she was trying to say it was in. So there might have been some girl that was on the fence, and the uh, other two were like out, out, and they're like staring at her. That to me is like <laughs> it's a that crazy, would be the fascinating part of self officiating is wild yeah. west. It's the wild west out there. All right, yeah. we're gonna move on to our finals. Next well, for a quirky sport, we need the wild west and lights. That's true. Maybe we should use a lasso to get the twine from one post to another. Add some quirkiness mm -hmm. to it. We can have like a rodeo OB guy who rides out on a horse. He lassos up the uh, the posts, and there you go. Yeah, where there was the mascot running in to tell us whether that was in or out there? Anyways, Good question. Um, another <laughs> him, Rich, Dustin, on to the finals. Rich, you have the lead by two. Would you like to go first or second? I'll lead off this time. Okay. Um, man, Dustin, let's hope he doesn't have another green screen. I mean, uh, it's... It's not right. looking good for me. <laughs> I accept right. that. Uh, so this one, uh, a lot of people were talking this online. I got a text from uh, from Robbie C that inspired this. He actually said, I'm just blasting everybody today. Um, he texted me, in what world is an aggregate? Uh, he said, debate night topic. In what world is going to an aggregate playoff better than sudden death? So I made this topic. The dynamic disc open notably used an aggregate playoff system rather than the traditional sudden death format. What are your thoughts on the use at, of this system at Pro Tour events, and should it be featured more rich? Well, 
you know, Dustin and I both come from a similar world from esports. Dustin for a long time in shooters, me for a long time in pay to win mobile games. And if there's one thing that <laughs> esports people like a lot, it's more opportunities, right? What's better than a best of three series? A best of five series. Reduce the randomness. And aggregate does that. Aggregate does reduce the randomness. You have one bad hole. How many courses, like think of try, think of doing a one playoff hole on a course that's as punishing as Northwood Black, right? You Having more data certainly does make things more, you could say more fair. You find out who the better player on that day is. There is the excitement, of course, of the one hole sudden death type of moment. But all of this comes back to the same problem we've been having with the Disc Golf Pro Tour for all for pretty much its entire existence, which you really can't do an aggregate playoff system when you have the FPO and MPO playing at the same time. And uh, you know, I, I want to talk about a, a, a horrible loss we took this weekend, and that was Cole Radolin walking <laughs> off the course and not finishing his round because this playoff was going on for a million years instead of going on and it's doing sudden death. Now, of course, could sudden death have gone back and forth and done the same holes a bunch of times? Absolutely, it could have. But all these things right now, we're sharing a space, right? If you and I are living in a one-bedroom house, we got to figure out how we move around the kitchen and who gets the bathroom when and who gets what side of the bed. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. And right now, this one caused a problem. So do I think aggregate could be good? Absolutely, especially on some more punishing courses. It gives us a better look at who's the better player overall. Do I think aggregate works right now when we're talking about time issues, when we're going over into the dark, where a player, I mean, where we're having players literally putt at baskets they have to squint to see? I don't think it works there. So the, the answer really is a somewhat of a maybe, but right now, not at all. Okay, okay. Yeah, fair enough. And the time was something that I thought of immediately. I'm like, I mean, think if we tried to bring this in, um, was it open at Austin? where Antelo was putting in the dark. I mean, it just would not have worked the same way. Um, and yeah, the Radolin story was an all time, like I couldn't even believe what I was reading when I heard that he just walked off the course. Uh, pretty crazy stuff there. So uh, Dustin, what are your thoughts on the aggregate playoff? So I'm going to give my take, but I want to congratulate Rich on a, on, a, on a victory here. I mean, you can't not win after that diagram on the green you screen. Uh, I'm just calling it. But anyway, uh, personally, I like sudden death more because I think, you know, it's more exciting. Every shot means more. The pressure's on. Uh, there's more suspense and there's less forgiveness. So uh, personally, I find the sudden death thing to be a little bit more exciting. However, a battle across several holes definitely raises more golf to watch and it provides an extended battle where you have that suspense kind of being spread out maybe so maybe it's not as intense but it's it, you're still having some heated type of moment and at the end of the day we're always trying to find the best golfer and we tend to agree that more golf accomplishes that goal and that's why a lot of people prefer four rounds to three particularly for majors maybe even more than four rounds so with that said, an aggregate provides more golf and, and therefore gets away from the maybe randomness of a sudden death or something like that. Another thing to consider with this is the starting hole that the playoff starts on because it could favor a certain type of shot or a certain type of player and create more of a single skill being tested to the side of the tournament as opposed to an aggregate where if you had the right holes, you get maybe a more balance of golf being played throughout those holes. And so therefore you get a better test being given to the players to decide who's going to ultimately win the thing. Uh, the issue with aggregate, as was already pointed out by Rich, is to link the play. If you're already tied after a three-hole aggregate, what are you going to do? Do another three-hole aggregate? We could be out there playing forever at that point. And so at some point, you're going to have to switch to sudden death. Maybe you can compromise and say, we're going to do one three-hole aggregate. If we don't have a winner after that, we're going to sudden death. I think the other thing that you could be doing is that obviously as a TD, you can make that call on the fly. You know how much time you have. If you get to a point, it's like, hey, we just don't have enough time to do an aggregate. We're switching to sudden death. But if you had the time here, hey, we have like three really good holes in this course that we think make a really good playoff, um, then I don't see any necessary problem of doing that. I do think that you have to somewhat be consistent, though. Like if some tournaments are using sudden death, some are using aggregate. Some tournaments are harder to win than others at that point. That gets kind of weird. Some courses don't have a good enough set of holes to do a great aggregate playoff, especially the logistics of like switching between holes for people walking around. So it, it's, it's really a tough one, but I think it can work. Yeah, the idea... Well, uh, yeah, go ahead, Rich. Quick, a quick note for you, Dustin. The the actual ruling here, if you if you watch the discussion, was it was a three hole aggregate that went to sudden death. So exactly what you were talking about is the way that the rules. I think here. the idea of switching on the fly is interesting. It just comes. It kind of goes back to the thought you mentioned, where like imagine there's a three hole aggregate playoff lineup scheduled with an emergency hole that is going to play to a certain player's strength, and then 
It's like, how dark is it? Does that one player get, it could get interesting in that regard. But I do think the biggest strength in the aggregate is a lot of people are like, and myself included sometimes. I remember when I first saw this on the PGA tour, I was like, what? No sudden death. Like I love sudden death. It's just the most dramatic thing ever. But if you have three really awesome holes that you can showcase in a playoff, it can actually be more epic because you can yeah, I mean, just get like 18 at champions. Landing yeah, it's is great. A solid aggregate. Yeah, like, yeah, I it, it, it's a pretty good spot to test it. But yeah, you mentioned the time concerns. There's a lot to get into there, but uh, you know, you don't want to make Cole at all and walk off the course. <laughs> Love you, Cole. Uh, Rich, the architect of the green screen. You are a champion today. Undefeated at this point. Yeah. Three and Three and oh, and goodness. you know what? The, the the winds keep on rolling, baby. I I'm here to I'm here to tell you guys all the important stuff. Like uh, don't throw Firebirds when it's wet and you have a lot of OB on your left hand side. Um, I'm glad you fireworks, mentioned that. Fireworks fireworks work a whole lot better when you have them built into your system, like Brody did. Then when you try to do them on the fly, like I did. And of course, the most important thing: please go to holdmybagdg.com <laughs> to play the best free to play fantasy disc golf game in the universe. Free to play. You pick a bunch of different players from all over, up and down. Brody got picked by 10% of people who played. Wow. In terrible, for terrible the, choice. For the players bunch ranked of idiots 50 out there. Above category. That's a category. You have to pick someone ranked above 50. Still so idiots. Brody, that one. Yeah, no, that, it was <laughs> who did you, you pick was, to win? Uh, well, you don't pick a winner. You pick someone from the top 10, someone no, from 11. You, you said you won last week. So what was your lineup? Oh, no, I ended up, uh, I beat my friend Bob, my co-host. I beat him, which means he has to caddy for me this week. Oh. So I got that big win. Yo, my lineup was pretty darn good. I had Ricky. I had, um, let's see, who else did I have for that one? Doesn't matter. I had a pretty darn good lineup. I had. I know I had Chris Dickerson. I had a bunch of guys who all put up really nice scores. And in the end, uh, you can come and play and win discs. And maybe even, if you do well all season, a disc golf bag. Well, somebody's got to go in there and beat Rich at something. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you, I feel like you need to call somebody out. Is there any other debaters you want to call out? Is it Gary? Is Gary it's like... I mean, look, look Gary, Gary's the dude. Gary's the dude. He's been pretty I, good. Uh, I, I like going head-to-head -head with Gary. Um, I like the energy he brings. We have very different styles, right? He's the number cruncher, right? Mm. And I come here with the flash and the bang. So I think that Gary and I... And, and some people, I'm not one of them, some oh. people will say that uh, I, I squeaked out a win maybe a little bit too close against Gary when we went head-to-head -head last time. It, so. was, it was very controversial. It was very controversial, yeah. yeah. So I think go. we can all agree, though, something I think we all never would have expected to see tonight was uh, Dustin giving up like Cole Riddellen in the final round there. Oh, I was just you got I just respect that game. was tough to see. That was sad. That was sad. That's all I'm saying. I was thinking Dustin was gonna go after it. And I he still went after it. I still gave it my best try. He did. He tried uh, his best. I like just really gave up and walked away. I mean, I'd like, you quote, said at the I'd like beginning. to quote Brody Bro, Smith earlier. I would like to quote Brody Smith in like question two, going, I don't even care. I'm not going to the finals. I just want to say this real quick. I yeah, I never go to the finals, so I don't Yes, that's true. You've won this show. Has there been a week he hasn't Brody has won this show sitting that's brody has never point. won that's a good point that's a good point all right well here's the thing another fan submitted topic this week it was a lot of fun if you want to submit a topic you can scan the qr code on the screen or you can click the link in the description get some topics in there we'll take fun ones you know lightsaber topic made it to this show because it was a good time and we like uh we like discussing all the crazy things that happen in disc golf um we've got more fun, fun events on the horizon so make sure to submit those topics thanks again for watching everybody we will see you next week